I'm just hoping there's some in here. Yep. There it is. Good day in yarning, everybody. Well, while this year has been quite successful for many of the fruits and vegetables that we've been growing and we've had some fantastic harvests already, there is one plant out here that has been much less successful, at least in one way, and that is our corn. Now, as I take you along this row, I think you can probably tell that the height of our corn is pretty limited. Now, part of that is because we grew a couple of varieties that are supposed to be shorter and provide corn earlier. But I think also there's something to do with the sunlight and the other plants, the squash, etc., that we're also growing on the other side. We tried to plant these corn in a way that's different from what we've done in the past. But I think one of the other issues we have is we did get them started a little bit later than we should have. Now, all of that being said, this is not in any way, shape, or form a total loss, and I'm excited to show you why. Now, while we did get pretty consistent tassel development from each of our varieties, and I did come out here and help the wind along by shaking these a little bit every once in a while, we weren't getting the height and we really weren't getting the size of the ears from what we were looking for. But that being said, there was something that developed on our corn last year that we tried for the first time ever. And what developed is a fungus called Huilacoche or corn smut. Now this was our first time trying it last year and actually we only harvested a few pieces so I was only able to try it just briefly in one taco. Now while I'm supposing that most gardeners wouldn't hope for more of this, because we got it last year and we only tried so little, we really hoped that we would get some more this year, and we did. And I'm gonna show you what that Huilacoche looks like as it's growing on here. And one of the things I wanna do this year is answer some of the questions that came up as we've released that video and over time we've received more comments and more questions just in general about Huilacoche. And I can answer those based on what we've learned as we've researched it and learn more about why so many people consider this to be a delicacy. One of the other questions we've seen is about just how this Huilacoche develops in the first place. And realistically, last year we talked about how our plants had suffered from a windstorm several times, been knocked over and stressed. And anytime you see something like that happening, the probability of whatever you're growing being opened up and exposed, here you can see some that's a little bit older, exposed to this kind of fungus is going to happen. And you can see these plants are actually somewhat sideways because a couple of weeks ago we had a terrible wind and rainstorm. And even though we tried to grow these along a trellis and some of them stayed vertical, we still had that same issue. And I think that's where our fungus has come from in this case. Again, I'm not treating this as a bad thing because it's actually something we're really excited for. I think one of the most common comments surrounding this sweet Lacoche is the look because I think a lot of people can't actually get past the look of it in order to want to try it. In fact, I've seen that comment multiple times. But the reality is, if you think about this as a fungus similar to a mushroom, if you think about it as similar to a mushroom, then perhaps that's something that sort of makes it more appealing. Because if you just think of it as a gall, which it is, or a fungus in general, and you don't think about it as something edible, that initial look is, well, my corn went bad, it exploded and it turned black. But another comment that I think is so interesting that sort of goes opposite of that one is that once you understand how expensive this is in areas where it's sold, I think it sort of ups the value of this wheat Lacoche. From what I've read, and I actually haven't looked for it in the stores here in the US, but you could be looking at anywhere from eight to $12 per eight ounces of canned Huilacoche. That is incredibly expensive, far more expensive than you'd find a regular ear of corn. That's one thing. The other thing that we addressed in our last video that I think is really interesting and important is that Huilacoche in general is better for you in terms of nutritional value than corn is. Now while in all likelihood unless you love Huilacoche or you're trying to grow it, you probably don't want it to spread throughout all of your corn. It's not going to be something that you want to just toss out. Now one of my favorite questions that's come up about Huilacoche is how on earth did somebody say, oh this looks fantastic, I'm going to try and eat this. Well the truth of the matter is 
that this eating Huila Coche has been around from what I've read since the Aztecs started doing this a very, very long time ago. And it's been added as a part of meals, tamales, and other things for hundreds of years. So this is not something that is at all new. Now, one of the other questions we've seen asked is about when this wheat lacoche should be harvested. Now, I'm going to pull this one out, and I'm going to show you the difference between this, which is an older wheat lacoche, and one of the other ones, which is actually a little bit newer. So if we take a look at the formation of these two, we have one that has had that wheat lacoche developed for quite a few weeks. This has probably been on here for, I would say, three or four weeks. And then we have one that has only recently developed. This is about a week and a half, maybe two weeks old. And you can see a substantial difference in terms of the color of the outside of the wheat lacoche. This one is much whiter. This one is gray, kind of dull, and actually turning black. And some of these galls have burst open. So you can see the difference there. All of these, well, there are two actually on here who have broken, but I broke most of that by accident. But you can see the difference here. This one is all enclosed, and this one is old and not looking so good. The best time to harvest and eat the wheat lacoche is within the first two weeks that you see it develop. That's when it's at its tastiest and highest nutritional value. And quite frankly, it looks the best at that point. When it starts breaking open, this is something that we actually wouldn't eat. This has been exposed to the air and it's not something that I want. Now, one of the other things you'll notice about most of the wheat lacoche that we've found anyway, while it's exposed here at the top, as you peel back the husk, you'll see that oftentimes it extends farther down. So it's not just there at the surface, that fungus works its way down the ear quite often. Now one thing that this being broken up does allow is for you to see what the inside of this wheat lacoche looks like. And as I hold my fingers up here, you can see it's kind of a liquidy, it's actually not dry in this case. Uh, it looks almost like squid ink in my opinion when you see what that looks like inside. Now in our last video, I definitely took some flack for eating this and, and cooking it up and eating it in a hard shell taco, which is definitely not a traditional method rather a corn tortilla or something like that to make your own kind of taco that way or I've, I've even heard people tell me that a cheese and huila coche quesadilla is fantastic another thing you can do is you can actually eat these pieces and i like to stick to the ones that are uh, whiter you can see this one is a little bit more it's smaller and it's pretty white there on the outside but they are fantastic mm. They're so fantastic raw. So you don't have to actually cook this. If you want to think about this like a mushroom or treat it like a mushroom, that's perfectly fine. These are really tasty. I want to get past the look of it because that earthy flavor, kind of a smoky earthy flavor is fantastic. It's especially delicious when you are cooking it up and adding some peppers to it. I think it really takes on the taste of vegetables that you add but this is quite wonderful to eat. Now this sweet lacoche looks almost like a flower with how it wrapped around everything in here. Take a look at that. One of the other questions that's come up is how you can store this or if you can store this. If you're keeping it in the refrigerator, you can actually keep it much like mushrooms, but it doesn't last all that long. So one of the things we've read and we haven't tried it, but if we have enough of it this year, we will. Uh, we've read that you can actually just take the galls apart Put them in a freezer bag and put them in the freezer for up to a year. If anyone here has had experience doing that, we'd love to hear about it. When all said and done, this is one fungus that we are going to enjoy off of our corn. Give it a try, get past the look of it, and enjoy. The taste is phenomenal. Yes, we want to do a better job with our corn production in the coming years, but in the meantime, we're super excited for this, and really, I'm going to go make a few tacos. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did and found it useful, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.